Hello, listeners, and welcome to Shelved Episode 9. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. So we're almost to 10. This is exciting. But uh, first, we got to get through this script. And actually, now that I think about it, Episode 10 is the one I'm most anticipating. So hopefully it's a fun episode in the way I'm envisioning it in my head. As at this point, we have not recorded it yet. We are recording it two days from now. Actually, we'll be recording it the day this episode comes out. So... Hopefully episode 10 delivers, but uh, for now, we're going to stick with episode 9, and today we are looking at a script called Wonka. Now, Wonka is written by, and I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right, Jason McAuliffe, and the logline, which is, you know, the short description of a movie, in case you didn't know. Uh, the logline reads, a dark reimagining of the Willy Wonka story beginning in World War II and culminating with his takeover of the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, um, I'm not a huge Willy Wonka fan, as I said on the mini episode, but this was a script I was pleasantly surprised by. I always let my guests pick the scripts, and when they picked this one, I was a little, uh, I don't know. Um, I ended up being very surprised and really enjoyed this script, as did my guest who picked it, and um, I think we both envisioned it being a little more darker than it was. There was a funnier die, or is it college humor or funnier die? One of those that did a uh, parody sketch of Willy Wonka called Gobstopper with Christopher Lloyd. That was basically like Saw meets Willy Wonka, and I would highly recommend checking that out. But yeah, I guess we inv- we both thought like when we heard dark reimagining, like I I pictured something more like Sweeney Todd, which was you know super dark and a musical, which Willy Wonka, the original Willy Wonka, was a musical. This one was not a musical. Although I really want to read the script to a musical because I've always wondered, are the songs in the script or is it just like insert song here or whatever? I actually have the script to La La Land, so I might just read that. And I heard that's actually worth doing for an episode. Um, I, I'm probably going to read that just to see like, oh, are the songs in the script? But um, in this, there are no songs. It is a dark reimagining, but it's not as dark as we bo- neither either one of us pictured. Um, I would say kids could still have watched this movie and I would actually like to see this movie get made like the way it is. We both have some reservations about like some moments in the script that could be changed, but we would both like to see it get made. And it was just a lot of fun and it's worth 100% worth reading because there's a lot of stuff in the script that we just can't go into detail on the show. Cause like then we just have to start reading pages. Um, but there's a lot of great dialogue. It's, the way they characterize Wonka, they do it really well, and I would highly recommend reading this script, but we had a lot of fun with this one, and it's a solid episode 9, but episode 10, I'm really excited for that, man, I just didn't realize episode 10 was so close. I know technically there's already been 10 episodes because of the mini episode, but hey, those are numbered point five, so they don't count, <laughs> um, and they're a little shorter. But yeah, so today we're talking about Wonka. I really hope you guys like this one. I really enjoyed reading it. I will say it does get off to a bit of a rocky start just because we were recording this at work and normally we record a little later in the night, but we had to get this one in a little earlier because of just timetables and there were still like quite a few people in the office and it does get a little weird talking on microphones in front of people so we're i guess just a little shy at the beginning but uh once everybody started clearing out we kind of picked up a little bit so i just want to apologize for that it was just we used to have a room with doors on it and for some reason the doors got taken off so now we're kind of just talking in front of people and it it just gets a little weird Uh, everybody was really cool nobody tried to interrupt or anything but i guess it's just a little bit of uncomfortability but um All right, let's just jump right into the script. So this is Wonka, and I sat down with my buddy Vinny, who has already done a couple episodes with me, and I think this was our most entertaining one yet. So I hope you guys enjoy. Did you end up watching the original movie? Uh, I just pretty much skimmed through it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish we skipped the beginning of it. We watched it back there. Uh-huh. And uh, I forgot how 
boring the beginning is. I, that's why I, I skimmed through it. I was watching <laughs> like the first like 12 minutes, and I'm like, why did I even think this was a good idea? But I just kind of skimmed because I mean, I've seen it numerous times. I just yeah. uh, I just kind of want to get a memory refresher. I, I haven't seen it in years, especially not like the whole thing. I usually come in pretty much at the, the good part when they first get to the factory. Yeah, and it's it's good from that point on. But yeah, we were I mean, watching it in the beginning. I feel like after watching, no, after watching, after reading the Wonka script, I almost wish that was the movie I was watching. Yeah, I, I will because we were we were searching for the movie and the the Tim Burton one is on Netflix and we're like nobody wants to watch yeah, that. No, thank you. And then yeah, luckily the original one was on Amazon Prime and the songs in the beginning aren't that good. Like and. The new, like the in in the Tim Burton? in the ori- in the original. Well, I don't oh. think any of the songs in Tim Burton. Yeah, I mean, just a couple to, songs, just a couple songs that I, I I don't know. I was never, you know, there were friends of mine who were hardcore into either Goonies or fucking Willy Wonka, and yeah. I mean, I was never hardcore. I seen it, you know. I I fucking liked uh, Nerd Candy. <laughs> yeah. um, that was pretty much it. Is Wonka you know? Candy still a, like a thing? I believe so. I, I mean, I, I know feel nerds like I've seen it at Seven Eleven, like the purple bar. So, yeah, because I was thinking of like I've never actually had like a Wonka chocolate bar. Actually, like, I'll th- tell you this: one of the I felt like a child. This is like <laughs> I don't remember when this happened, but there was a chocolate bar that um, they came out with, and it was like close to one. The Tim Burton remake. Yeah, I do remember the candy kind of ramping up around that time again. Yeah, and they they released a. It was a Wonka chocolate bar, just like a regular chocolate bar, but with like the purple wrapper and everything. Yeah, but with with Pop Pop Rocks, Rocks. and so you're eating the chocolate, but you're getting the popping sensation. Really, it was so fucking awesome. That sounds pretty fucking cool. Yeah, and I remember kind of getting a little kick off those. So yeah. That was one thing while watching the old movie I was thinking of is like, I've never had a Wonka chocolate bar and they look so cool in the purple wrappers and everything. I was like, I kind of want to hunt it, hunt one down. Yeah. But I was like, I don't know if they still make it anymore because I could not tell you the last time I saw a Wonka branded candy. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I remember looking back, I remember looking at that candy bar specifically, but as a recent, no, I feel like yeah. I'm actually going to look it up while we're doing all this. Yeah. I mean, and nerds is obviously a really popular candy and I only kind of stumble across that around Halloween, but because I'm, I'm not, I don't. I'm not looking for it, obviously. Right. But um, nerd rope, that's where it's at. Yeah, this man, those were, those were too much even for me. I would, I would like, I'd get them once in a while and I'd like them, but overall, just give me a box of nerds. Why the hell is there a seven ounce Willy Wonka chocolate bar Ugh. on Etsy? What? Yes. Yeah, Wonka sold out. I, w- I would be skeptical of buying food off Etsy. Yeah, especially when it's supposed to be made in a fucking majestic place, like you know. The chocolate factory. Yeah, how do I know an Oompa Loompa even touched that thing? No. I'm sure it was somebody short and creepy looking, but it wasn't Oompa Loompa. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as like the original movie goes, it's it's only when Wonka comes in that, to me, the movie gets interesting. No, and, for sure. And the songs from Wonka are better than any of the other songs in the movie. Like the song with the old grandpa and the Candyman song and all that. Just kind of in one ear and out the other for me. Like yeah. the whole beginning part. Yeah. And I, I, you know what? I will say this. The one thing I do take away from what, rewatching the old one, um, it, you know, it's a, cl- it's a classic. It, it's yeah. not my all time favorite movie, but it's definitely enjoyable. No, but it's good. But I'm, I'm glad I watched it because after reading the script, you, um, you kind of have more of appreciation for the way it's written because it kind of ties yeah. together why the kids were yeah. there and the reason behind it. And I feel. I don't know. If you you want to start talking about it? Yeah, well, I guess we should just start talking about the beginning. Um, it it, it kind of opens with. I mean, first of all, the first thing we see is Loompa Land. Yeah, and they they establish a timeline of nineteen thirty nine, which I don't know if they ever give like a clear time period of when the Gene Wilder movie takes place. As far as when I was watching, it, I didn't pick up on anything. No, I, don't think I so. mean, it's definitely you know, uh, when that movie is what seventies. Oh, dude, I I. I don't want to be lying, but it sounds like it could be right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. I, I don't think it's as far as the 80s, but um, it definitely has like a 40s feel to it. Like you look at the the house and the structure, but I don't know. The candy store kind of has like a 50s vibe going on. I feel like the characters in general were written in the same time as the original movie. 
it just felt that way. Yeah. You know, like just the, even the way the characters were represented and the way they spoke, it just, it all, the way I was picturing it in my head was almost yeah. like the and original. The Tim Burton movie felt completely detached from the, you know, the, the Tim Burton original felt more like those weird visions and like yeah. shit that he sees, you know, yeah, because it's like, like if you took that scene in the tunnel and then extended that for a whole movie. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. So the, so, so the story opens, um, where, yeah, it's like, yeah. Um, it, well, we get a little Loomba Land thing, and it, this little Loomba Land opening, I think, is actually kind of pointless. I would cut it from the movie in particular. But we see... Uh, have you seen the movie Pan that came out like a year or two ago? No. Um, the beginning of this script is very similar to the beginning of Pan, where they tried to take Peter Pan and make it all dark and gritty, and it's like they're in World War Two, and... Uh, we watched it in the back. I thought it was a really terrible movie, but the beginning of this script reminded me of the beginning of that movie, but done well. Like this opens up with uh, Wonka and his buddies, which what was their name? There was Slugworth. Um, I don't know if I took notes of all their names. Slugworth is oh yeah, uh, Devin and Slugworth. So yeah. it's Wonka, Devin, and Slugworth. They're kind of friends, and Wonka's original name is William Baniston. Yeah. And they're just like partying on top of a roof as Germans are dropping bombs on. Yeah, London. aren't they like playing music? Yeah, and like kind of like a street band, I guess you could say, like a yeah. traveling street band that just yeah. walks around. Yeah, but it's just like something they do, and right away they establish Wonka's kind of twisted view of reality, which is something that just keeps popping up throughout the script. And he basically just says, "Reality is what you want it to be." Yeah. Actually, and I will say this: um, for the first time in history of uh, yeah, me being on the shelf podcast, I took no screenshot of my favorite line in this whole. I've done that script. a few times. I never end up reading it on the show. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's towards the end, so I'll, I'll make okay. sure I slip it in at the right time. Yeah, no, there's actually a lot of good dialogue in this. Like that was the thing in the beginning. Because it is a pretty dialogue-driven script for the most yeah. part. Like it isn't until the middle where you kind of get like some action scenes. But I, there's a lot of good dialogue in the beginning, and they do a very good job of establishing the kind of crazy that Wonka is. Like, yeah, I feel like from the beginning, you kind of, without even being explained, from just reading the dialogue between the characters and the interaction between the, 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 the three characters, you yeah. can already tell that Wonka's like in his own yeah. state. You know, like he's he's so out there that... Like he, can, he acknowledges reality, but he twists it into his own view because like as they're dancing on the roof he says you know reality is what you make it but then like a bomb drops nearby and he's like yeah and maybe not always but like you know he's yeah, yeah. he's at least aware of reality yeah. but he really plays with it in his own perspective and that's kind of the thing he has this band of brothers basically they're yeah literally a band and they kind of just buy into his perception and they're all just you know having a merry old time and it goes quickly, like, we kind of just get this opening scene with them as kids to establish, you know, the characters. And then we jump, uh, like, 10, 15 years ahead yeah. to them working in, like, a toothpaste factory. Mm -hmm. And which I thought more was going to come out of this toothpaste factory. But, um, yeah, and then we it's just them older. And Wonka's still kind of the same guy he is, just working a job, yeah. which was a little different. Um, and do you know how to pronounce this girl's name? Evely or something. Evely. Like that? I feel yeah, like I'm, I will just go with Evely or Evelyn. The, the one thing I do like is the fact that they kind of humanized Wonka in the beginning. Like the fact that he's working at a yeah. factory, you know, like, and he, you, you, you kind of see him go through love and heartbreak. Like yeah. he almost kind of, cause that was the only thing with me is looking and watching Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory as an adult. Mm hmm. Made me as a kid. I just wanted to see the chocolate factory. I just yeah. want to see what it was. As an adult, I want to know who is this Willy Wonka guy and why is yeah. he like that? You know what I mean? So it's like, I it, it raises like it raises a lot more questions as an adult and rewatching it now. And I yeah. feel like this script kind of gives a lot more of personality and a lot more character. You know, I I hundred percent agree because I was worried that like when you watch the Gene Wilder movie, we're we're only seeing a chunk of Wonka in the movie, first of all, and you only see a little bit of his life and he's just this one crazy guy throughout. And it's the same thing that Tim Burton movie kind of did. They, they try to give you a little backstory in the Tim Burton movie, at least, but he's still just like this weird guy, the whole movie. 
And this script does a really good job of establishing him as a person and taking him on a journey that by the end of the script, you believe him as basically this Gene Wilder crazy dude, but maybe a little more unhinged than that version. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Just a little. But yeah, they do a really good job of developing his character throughout the movie and i was kind of worried it's just like oh he's just going to be crazy and aloof through the whole thing but they they do they humanize him at multiple points so he sees evely we'll say yeah and, um crying first yeah, of all yeah and um you can already kind of tell from the moment you read and you see her name you kind of get the vibe that that's gonna be the girl who Willy wonka falls for yeah and i mean sure enough, immediately and they they don't shy away from it either because it's literally the next paragraph where he's they literally introduce her as oh she's been widowed for a year and then in the next paragraph he's like what he just walks right up to her he says it's a shame you'll never know the joy of being courted by me like he's just throwing himself at her kind of speed game (laughs) yeah and almost like insulting her in a way just to try to convince her to hang out with them yeah and she's she's immediately put off by it until she goes home and her mom like sees them outside the window and then forbids her from seeing him, even though she had no interest. And now that gave her interest. Yeah, But then, yeah, it's almost like she then started gaining interest, but it almost seemed like in the beginning, it was just kind of a tactic, a revenge tactic, you know, like yeah. she was trying to piss off her mom. She was trying yeah. to, put, you know, press the her mom buttons. is driving her away and rebellious teenager. Like, Oh, well now I'm going to go hang out with them because you don't like it. And I don't like you. And right. And then that's when it ended up to, um, you know, them hanging out and, uh, Willie tries to kiss her. She pulls away. That ends up kissing him. And yeah. Then it was weird because then all of a sudden she has this very shocked look on her face to then realize that, she isn't a widow, and the guy who she thought was dead is not dead. Yeah. That was hell. Her yeah. Her soon-to-be husband. Yeah, so he he's like the son of this chocolate family, the Buckets. Yeah. Which, Asshole. that was see, that was one thing rewatching the movie. You find out that Charlie's name is Charlie Bucket, and that comes up later in the script. And having not watched the movie in, like, a really long time, I, all of this was kind of new to me until I... Like, I actually like the fact that I didn't rewatch the movie before before I read this. I almost feel like I want to rewatch the movie now like cuz I I last night I decided to reread the last 30 just to kind of refresh my memory. Yeah. And seeing all that it's like the buckets are almost painted to be the villains and the story. Yeah, they're painted to be terrible yeah. people. Yeah, so watching and then back re- and you see the whole family hanging out and they look like a poor family in a home yeah. and you're like, "Oh, those are the assholes." Yeah, like e- but they do, I'm trying to remember, because they really only establish the mom of, as being, like, really horrible. Even the dad yeah. was just kind of, like, didn't as give a shit. As they got older, he was just like, yeah, yeah shut and, up. Yeah, and then when they got older, he was still the nice one, and she was, you know, still a bitch. But, yeah, it's weird to read the script knowing that, oh, this is this terrible family, and then you watch that movie, and it's the same people. And it's just a really interesting perspective. And I'm glad I didn't watch the movie before I read this, because things were actually coming to me as a surprise. Like once they introduced Charlie, I was like, Oh shit, this script is going there. Cause I thought it was going to be one of those things where you, this is like a straight up prequel and ends where maybe the Gene Wilder movie begins, but they, or it could be like the crow 2037. It's completely, yeah. And just opposite. completely have nothing to do with it. But no, they, they actually do the story in this movie. Like yeah, the last like, toward, 20 towards pages. The end, I was like, what's going to happen. Then I realized, Holy shit, this is they, Willy Wonk on the Yeah, They're factory. just doing it's, it. And it's, it's kind of crazy. Like I was not expecting that at all. So I th- I thought it was a really cool um, spin to do that where you thought she was widowed and all of yeah. a sudden he comes back and you realize he's a big bag of douche. Yeah. And, and an I asshole. mean, the problem is this having rewatched the movie, this movie doesn't fit entirely because Charlie doesn't have a dad in the original movie. And in this, he's very present as a horrible alcoholic yeah, like like abuser. Say, but, he's present but, um, mentally. But. I mean, we're kind of getting ahead, but... One thing, so I think when they introduce Evely, they basically just, she automatically buys into his crazy, and like, he they're having imaginary tea parties, and all this weird shit, and she's just into it. Yeah. And it's, it's basically just like a montage of love, and them hanging out, and then all of a sudden World War II ends, and that's when we were talking about her husband, or fiance, it turns out to be alive, because everybody yep. thought she, he, he was dead. And then he comes back, and... Things she, quickly spiral out of She thought that he was dead, but he's not. To then realize, okay, well, then, then he is no going to be married to him. And Willie then decides, you know what? 
I'm going to be forward with her. So he asks her, do you really love the guy? And well, she, before I'm trying to remember if this happened. Didn't he propose to her before this, he no, came this back? Is bef- this was um, no after. Oh, it so is he after? comes back and he pulls her to the side and he asks her, like, do you love him? You know, like, do you yeah. even love him? And she, she then says, admits that she doesn't. Yeah. And then and she loves he, Lily. He gets on one knee and um, gives her a piece of butterscotch. <laughs> yeah. And that was his Which way of proposing. I see, those are those are kind of the moments I like because he gives her the butterscotch and he's like, "You didn't think I would do a normal proposal?" Yeah, and he or says it backwards. You? Yeah, he's yeah, he says that's will you marry me backwards? And like those are the moments I kind of like. They really do. They like I said, they establish him little as a things character. that kind of sprinkle like yeah. the personality of, of what yeah. we know as Willy Wonka. Whereas in the beginning, he's kind of fun and lighthearted, and in the end, you see how that lightheartedness flows into his insanity. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of a fun thing about it. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like what was it? So after, so he yeah, proposes he proposes to her. They're gonna have a dinner. Yeah, and they invite Willie. Yeah, and the whole his whole idea is that they're gonna tell them at dinner. Yep, that, what's going on? And yeah. that they're gonna get married and not her and hell. Yeah, and but then, she has zero backbone and just yep. Completely. Will, Willie stand, what was it? It was a comment that Hal had made. And Willie got pissed off and stood up. Yeah, because he expected it would have been the time for her to stand up, be like, "Oh no, Make actually, an yeah." And she just goes with it, and he Willie immediately just gets fucking pissed and storms out. I, I forgot how it, it was something like. So they're at the dinner table around both her and Hal's family. Yeah, and he says, um, "Well, this is Willie." Willie says. Um, yeah, Evely has an announcement to make, thinking that she's going to get up and say, hey, you know, I don't love you. I'm going to stay with Willie. She gets up and says, I'm going to marry Hal. And yeah. Willie gets pissed off, st- almost storms <laughs> off. So and, so um, before we move on can, we, further, can we mention the little, I forgot the name of uh, the the woman who's like the care the maid, the maid who the, could, i think this is literally what i was about the little to say. ass tap yeah yeah so they're at the dinner party and the, he does it like blatantly she's yeah. like i think she's like serving food or something and he reaches up her skirt and pats her on the ass yeah and immediately introducing what kind of character hal is yeah and you can kind of see what kind of relationship they both have it kind yeah. of foreshadows yeah and it comes back in a way darker place after that yeah. because this is how we get sentenced to jail right is yeah. he beats the shit out of her he fucks her and then beats the shit out of her with yeah. the cane which Willie and then he's, he, would walk around with. So then it was kind of like he was framing him because yeah. he demanded that she go and tell the police that it was Willie who beat yeah. the shit out of her. So Willie, because the Buckets are like the most powerful family in London, he gets sentenced to like a prison camp. And this is where the script gets a little darker than I expected. Because I, I had assumed this was like a little bit of a darker version of the story going in. But it's so he he's on a prison boat and he's going over to basically Lumpa Land. They don't name it as such, but that's where you f- find out where he's going. And he's on he's with he's got two like bunk mates mm-hmm. and ends up killing both of them in the most ridiculous way. Where one guy has a knife that he ends up stealing, and the wave crashes and hits the boat. Yeah, and the guy falls into the knife and accidentally kills him. And then the other dude is like, well, I'm going to tell on you. And he's like, no, it was an accident. And he's like, I don't care. I'm going to tell on you. He ends up just smothering that guy with was a that, pillow. Was it Prodnose or something like that? Yeah, because he takes their names. It's like, um, I know Prodnose or some shit like that. It was like the, the dude who was... I think, yeah, like one pillow. guy was Prodnose and the other guy had a different name. He ends up taking... Both their names both, and combir- combining it together to yeah, make a new persona. I thought I took a note on that, and I guess I didn't. And then once he takes their names, he then announces William Bannison or whatever as dead. Yeah. And so his family. Thinks so basically, he's yeah, he's he's taken on a new identity, and everyone just assumes he's gone. And it's oh, kind. Keep, keep in mind, keep in mind this um, this whole him being in prison. This happens immediately after she doesn't tell the family that they're gonna get married so yeah he she, storms off she basically just leaves him in the dust yeah the asshole i guess fiance gets pissed off you know and then of course what does he do what does he do later on that night he tells the maid to meet him in the room and that's where he has sex with her and then afterwards hits her with the cane and they frame willie which takes us to the boat that we are speaking of right now yeah and so yeah, so when they, they kind of they pull into the dock, he gives his fake name. Then we get the family getting the news that Willie's supposedly dead, and this is kind of where he starts planning his revenge. I don't know if he's declared it at this point, but it's pretty obvious. Like he's he's working on something, and he quickly makes a friend, Felix, 
who kind of becomes his prison buddy. Yeah. And the whole thing of this prison camp is they're basically there harvesting cocoa, cocoa beans yeah. for chocolate for the buckets, which everybody said is terrible. So isn't it funny that uh, just recently they were talking to me, like, I feel like I've been seeing posts on stopping um, like big businesses from using free labor at jails. Really? Yeah. Like there's a bunch of companies that use uh, inmates to do free labor for the companies. Really? Yeah. So it's just like, I haven't that's, heard that's of one of the things I thought about when I was reading this. I mean, that's a pretty, like, isn't, wasn't the thing always back in the day is prisoners were making license plates. Yeah, they that were was doing like a stereotypical they were doing thing in like movies and the stuff. The most ridiculous shit, like yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it gives you something to do. I mean, what the fuck? Are yeah, you doing it makes about? sense. I mean, they should get paid. Yeah, so I yeah. think usually, like, in official capacity, that stuff goes towards their commissary. Because I want to say when my brother was in jail, he could there was he could work at the prison, and that would add money into his commissary. It was like cents. Like he would do a day's work and get like twenty cents or some bullshit yeah. like that. But I mean, that's kind of how it goes. But not surprising at all to hear some people are using free labor. No, no, especially, I mean, I assume uh, jails are also like hospitals. You got your good ones, you got your really shitty yeah. ones. And this, this is also taking place in the 40s where things are a little different. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we get introduced to Felix, who kind of becomes his buddy. And then so I'm, I'm pretty sure something happens that he gets, Willie gets sent out into the jungle to collect the schnozberries. I, I, I feel like they were talking and the main... Sorry, like the guy who runs the prison overheard them talking and then he basically handpicked him to go get the snozberries because everybody knows it's like a dangerous job yeah kind of like you know we're gonna send you out into this jungle where there's all these wild creatures and which, i almost feel like maybe maybe it's just me but wonka even in that situation stuck out like a sore thumb in the jail because yeah if you, rem- if you know if you remember the guy who ran the whole jail thing called him a pansy. So I feel like maybe from the whole group, he was probably the one who just looked stuck out, you know, whether it's just he was a kind of weirdo or whatever it yeah. was. And he, he, he still was kind of being a little happy go lucky, even though they're all in prison. Yeah. What do you so. call it? A boat, uh, like a vacation boat or what? A yeah. cruise or something. Yeah. He's basically <laughs> implying that he was on vacation instead of being in a fucking boat full of prisoners. Yeah. Um, so this is another reason why I'm glad I watched the movie is because throughout the early parts of the script, they do a lot of name dropping of Loompa Land, which just seems to be something that everybody's aware of. Um, and a bunch of different animal names like the Vermicius Nid and yeah, that that's um, what it is. It's like Snaggletooths or something like there's all these like weird animals. All of those were name dropped in the movie and I didn't catch that. Wang, and I was actually Wang Doodles and shit. Yeah, Wang Doodles. And I, can't I, I wrote. Uh, Wayne Doodles, Hornswoggler, yes. Snazwaggler. Like, throughout the script, some people no. are like, oh, Hornswogglers aren't real. And then other people just seem to acknowledge that they are real. There's there's a little inconsistency with that stuff. But, yeah, all those were name-dropped in the movie, and I didn't know that. And yeah, I, I didn't was, know that, so you mentioned it to me. You yeah. To he, um, what's his Gene Wilder names all those. And I was actually reading, because there's two books. There was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and fuck, I can't remember the name. Oh, the gl- and Charlie in the Glass Elevator was the second book. And I was I read like the Wikipedia for the second book just cuz I was wondering if any of it would be in the script. And the Vermicius Nid were actually like aliens. And there's like a the second book sounds weird as fuck. There's like a space hotel that they go to cuz like the glass elevator goes out of control and takes them I'm to space. I, I I mean the moment that ended uh, I'll say in the end. But yeah. Um, um, so they, they end up going to, like, in the book, they go to the, some space hotel, and it turns out the aliens are Vermicius Nid. Yeah, they're aliens. And none of that's ever mentioned in the movie or in the script or anything like that, but I guess that's where those things come from. It's like a total 180. Yeah, but it, I thought, like, I read, because I read the thing about the book before we rewatched the movie, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. They pulled stuff from the second book into the script, and then to turn out they name-dropped all that shit in the movie, too. I just, the, that was kind of the thing I got out of rewatching the movie. But, um, yeah, so he's sent out to get these snozberries, which, you know, everybody knows snozberries taste like snozberries. Um, and he ends up meeting the Oompa Loompas for the first time. Mm-hmm. And they're basically just like they're not like little orange and green people like no. they were in this movie. They're just like little tribe people, yeah. I guess, more akin to the Tim Burton version. Right. Um, that stuff. Yeah. That stuff is more like the because I think in the book, that's basically what they were, too, is little right. tribe people. Um. Yeah, and his, so they basically say there's like there's some prophecy that he's their savior. Yeah, no, he was basically that. What was he saying that some? 
I forgot what it was. I don't know what he was reading from, but yeah, it was pretty much it was what like he was cave saying paintings. that the blue eyed um, savior, and yeah. then this only point is him. And then what was it? It was a uh, the horn of was it a, a horn swaggler's yeah, horn? Yeah, the horn swaggler's horn, and which is used. So he the Oompa Loompa gives him chocolate that yeah. they make, and it's delicious which, versus is, which becomes a wonka chocolate yeah and versus the fucking buckets chocolate which everybody says is garbage and bitter and nobody likes it so so while he was out there he encountered a bunch of animals and the oompa loompa ended up saving him like he basically encounters every animal that they name drop like one at a time and he ends up getting the snozberries and getting caught by the oompa loompa and then yeah they have the cave painting that tell the story of him as a savior and he's just kind of like no i'm not a savior mm-hmm. or whatever but then he goes back, and him and Felix start learning how to make this chocolate. Yeah, no, I believe. Well, the Oompa Loompa, the, the Oompa tell, Loompa told him to yeah. to crush the the horn into dust and drop that into is that the what, chocolate. That's what the poison is. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so they, that's it becomes a poison dust. Yeah, they start poisoning people at the prison, and um, the, so they end up basically getting chosen to host a dinner party or like I'm not not host but work a dinner party, right? And they introduced Governor... God, the names in the script are amazing. Governor Foulbody and uh, Prince Pondicherry, which I, I think one of those names comes from one one of the books. I, I, I think it was Pondicherry is from, I think, the second book. That was my nickname in high school. Oh, yeah? Prince yeah. Pondicherry? Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> um, princess. Princess. Yeah. So they end up poisoning the dinner party. Everyone except for Prince Pondicherry Prince, yeah. dies. And then they try to they, they try to make it seem like it wasn't them. Like yeah, they they're like, oh my God, like, somebody's oh, trying to kill us. us three. Yeah, we have to escape. And so they all escape into the forest. And that's when they release the Vermicius Nid, which has kind of been hinted at like early parts in the script. They were feeding Oompa Loompas to it. And that- well, we do. We got it. We, before that, we got to mention. Um, fuck. What was the name of the. The baby, the the guy who took, because Felix had this invention, and it was it was a watch that oh, basically yeah. it would it would make a ding, and it, like ten years oh, it before would like, you were set to die. So like let's yeah. say you got you got a fucking ding now, you would die on ten years from that yeah, time, March tenth at six thirty five p.m. on two thousand twenty seven, and then I guess I forgot which which character was it. It was the I know was, the son's name was Gloop. Yeah, it was it was Augustus Gloop's dad, basically. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's how we they kind of tie in the kids. So yeah, he worked for Augustus Gloop's dad, and he invented the watch that tells you when you're gonna die. And didn't the kid put it on or yeah, something? Yeah, he put and it, it on his dinged? son when he first was born. Yeah, and it dinged right away. And so, oh my god, I'm just fucking putting this together now because Willie pushes him in the chocolate. Ten years that. Oh my god. Yeah, cause he kept asking like, "What time were you born?" Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. We're, we're sorry, guys. We're uh, we're. Pu- you just kind, kind of, of fucking together. blew my mind right there. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And that's how he got sentenced to prison because Gloop sent him there. And that's how he met Willie. And uh, he and is right also vowed yeah. revenge. So basically when the prince, Felix and Willie Fuck, are trying dude. to escape the monster, the vermicious nid. There we go. That um, I guess you can say alien or whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, and this is to, just a monster. Yeah, it goes to kill Felix and Felix it, looks at him and kind of he wants to. Like he knows he's not going to escape. Yeah, or and he basically tells him to do him a favor, and and he tosses him the watch. Yeah, and then he just gets eaten by the monster. So now it's just the prince and Willie in the jungle, and they end up making a run for the prince's plane. Right. And keep in mind. Keep in mind. This whole time, Willie is coming across as a slight psycho because he had really just weird. finished accidentally killing somebody, <laughs> and then proceeds to purposely kill somebody. Yeah, and then seems to have revenge in his mind which then shortly after that felix dies he hands him to watch almost to say hey he's take taken care on of his revenge for us. Yes. yeah this is the, it really is one big revenge plot which is not at all and i was expecting so okay so willie's gonna go there he's gonna learn how to make the chocolate he's gonna come back buy the toothpaste factory turn it into a chocolate factory and that wasn't what happened no. so i i honestly thought i was calling it from the beginning and i was legitimately surprised multiple times throughout the script that it it, it goes in a totally different direction. I mean, similar, but different. Um, so the prince, the, his whole thing is he had a dream. To live that, in a chocolate mansion or whatever <laughs> Like a hell. chocolate palace. Yeah, there we go. And so he wants Willie to make him, which this is when he adopts the name Willy Wonka. So he asks that when they get on the plane and they're flying back to India, which is where the prince is from. That was the way of escaping the whole prison. That was his little scheme. Yeah. Is like they just had they end up poisoning somebody and they're kind of just going with the flow. This guy's got a plane. Let's get the fuck out of here. 
And then, yeah, he tells him that he had a dream of having a chocolate palace in India. And then he asks Willie his name. And he's like, yeah, I'm Willie Wonka. And so that's where he adopts that name. And then he's like, well, you're going to build my chocolate palace. And you can tell there's reservations. Like He's like, I don't think that's a good idea. But okay, you're fucking getting me out of here. And then we get kind of like a little bit of a time jump, like two years, I yeah. think. And the palace, is, he just built it. Mm-hmm. And it's got like a ice dome over it because yeah. it's in the desert, which I don't know how an ice dome yeah, would. Yeah, i just trying to figure that shit out. Yeah, myself. I mean, they definitely play. It's not the real world. They yeah. play with it a little bit. But um, yeah, so he's built this chocolate palace and they're getting ready to have his birthday party. And the whole time, Willie's like, hey, you when you take that dome down, this is probably not going to go well. Yep. And the dude just does not. He's like, in my dream, it didn't melt. So it's all good. Yep. And, and so- then <laughs> it happens exactly the way you probably picture a fucking uh, chocolate palace melting from in the, the top. middle of the desert. <laughs> yeah. But before that happens, we get introduced to another character, Angie Salt, which yep, again, which Salt the was she's the wife of Veruca Salt, the, although the, we, the, the mother. Yeah, the mother. Sorry. Um, but also in in the movie in Willy Wonka, the her mom is in the movie and is not the same as this version. Yeah, no, this one, uh, her and Willy Wonka have like some kind of past. So they, they, they hook, hook up, up in this sucks. like straight up, and it's it, it's basically done in the format of they meet. So Wonka is like rich at this point. You can tell that the prince has been very kind to him, and he's. Oh, oh! This is where he gets his limp too, because he yeah, got yeah, bit yeah. by the vermiculous nid when yeah, they yeah. were getting in the plane. So that's right. why he has a cane. That's why he has a limp. Yep. Which they he he doesn't really have a limp in the Gene Wilder movie. No. I mean, the whole thing is he limps out and then he does the little roll, and which I guess the story is Gene Wilder only did the movie if he was allowed to do that. Like that was his thing. He's like, this has to be in the movie. He's like, I want to do this thing, and they're like, okay, and they let him do it, and it's one of my favorite moments of the movie. <laughs> um. Yeah, but so they give him a reason for the limp. Did and not know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's such a fucking Gene Wilder thing. He was the best. Um, but yeah, so he meets Angia at like the pool, basically. He's like hanging out at the pool, and she's fucking immediately flirting with him. And they basically just cut to him walking out of a hotel room and the classic, like her coming out all disheveled. Like they yep. just had a good time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he's like, well, I got to go. And yeah, she's like, just, when am I going to see you again? He's like, oh, I'll let you know. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll need you. <laughs> and then he just like leaves her. Cause she like the salt family. They, they're a big, like not candy, but like, isn't it nuts? nuts? Yeah, nuts. They're, she's part of the nut family. Salt, and he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see, it. I don't. Something about like, he's like, I'm a big fan of your nuts or something, or, like or, that. or yeah, or like, I really enjoy your 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 husband's nuts. And she's like, well, at least somebody does. Or yeah. something like making comments <laughs> yeah, that she's just in an, in an unhappy marriage. Yeah, you know? there's she's a like lot making, of entendre going on with this character. Yeah, and she becomes like obsessed with him. Yeah, like, yeah. She, which which kind of leads to my favorite line in the whole. I, th- I thought the nuts line might be my favorite um, line. Well, really quick, I'll just skip. But there's a part in the end where basically, you know, the kids get chosen t- to. Yeah, they straight they, up do they the, receive golden the golden tickets. tickets. Um, of course, no spoiler here. Veruca Salt gets the ticket, and yeah. her dad decides, you know what, fuck it, I'm going and I'm taking the mother with. Yeah, and they they all go because he wants to confront Willy Wonka because yeah, he finds he out they had an that, affair. Yeah, and there's a line. Where he approaches Willie, um, and his name is Herbert, and he he comes up to Willie and he says, "I know you've been getting it on with my wife," <laughs> but he says it like he's almost yeah. whispering to Willie, and then Willie Wonka whispers back and says, "And I hated every minute of it." <laughs> yeah, you, sir, <laughs> he's like you are a hero a to men. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a hero to men. Um, all over the world for taking that woman off of her hands. Yeah. And I was like, at that point, I almost <laughs> needed to clap because I was like, that, that is possibly the most uh, well-played line. I'll say I laughed multiple times reading this script. Like, there's been two scripts so far that I've read and just really enjoyed the dialogue. And this was one of them. I, I, I laughed. I thought he was really well-written. And I, I it's just because I'm not a huge Willy Wonka fan. Like, honestly, when you pick this script, I was kind of like, oh, man, I don't want to do that. But like, I always let the guests pick the script. And the whole point is I want to learn more and be open to more things. And I'll say, as soon as I started reading it, I burned through the first 30 pages. And like, oh, dude, an it's instant. a quick like, I mean, it's yeah, I would say quick read. It's probably not. I mean, you'll, you'll probably take an hour or so or a little more. 
but it's and I, I mean it in the sense that you start reading it and all of a sudden you're just reading and reading and realize you're on page like 90. Yeah, and I was really into it and it's because of the writing. It's really well written. They the the dialogue, everything with every character, but mostly with Willie. It's it's just there's such good I'm having a lot of trouble finding my words today. Everybody meshes really well. Like, you don't like sometimes with writers, I always feel like you're hearing the same voice come out of everybody just because it is one writer writing everybody. It's really hard. And I have this problem, too. It's really hard to separate the characters from yourself. And I felt like everybody had an individual voice and they all served a purpose and they all felt unique and were funny. Like right. Wonka is really funny right. in the script. It like and I actually looked at my notes. I did have that. I've been enjoying your husband's nuts for years. Is what his line and she mm-hmm. says. I'm glad someone had. Yeah, I had that in my. There was multiple lines of dialogue. I yeah, just had in little, my little notes. sexual innuendos and just like adult humor here and there. You know, and I. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, I will definitely say. I mean, I I enjoyed watch. I mean, reading the Crow 2037 and and the Resident Evil yeah. script because you know, of course, I love horror and this one. I just remember reading the description and saying it was more of like a dark view on it yeah and, and i expected it to be darker than it was yeah but, but you know what was, I, I think i mentioned to you last week um in case nobody's seen it but there is also a christopher lloyd I, it doesn't have anything to do it was a college humor sketch yeah but and it was it was really fucking so good. fucking cool and it's called gobstoppers and yeah it's um christopher lloyd playing a really creepy willy wonka and it almost <laughs> yeah, it's, it's slightly, like saw meets willy wonka yeah it's like almost what i want to picture this script like this character in this script probably like 30 years from now it reminds me either in the 90s or the early 2000s they made like they made horror versions of a lot of classic stories like a horror version of pinocchio and that's kind of what it reminded me of and i would love to see them actually do like let's just fucking do a horror movie which is something i've never understood is like how did willy wonka get associated with like horror and creepy and it's like it happens to a lot of these older movies because it's a fucking kids movie you watch the original willy wonka and there's some weird shit in there don't get me wrong the the supposed death of all the kids and blah 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 even though i think they in this script they do show that they all live and it's something that they did in the tim burton version as well where you see all the kids leaving the factory at the end yeah. although they're all a little fucked up like the girl's really tall and shit they do kind of the same thing in this they're all kind of bandaged up and hobbling out of the factory right. at the end like hey just to let you know everybody lived but they're just hit a time where everybody was like yeah willy wonka is like a horror story and I mean, I get it. I mean, you, I, I mean, I think, I think with the right mind, you can always, you can always do that. It's, it's yeah. really easy to take something and make it dark. Like, I mean, I mean, I'm, I, just, I don't I just know. I'll pull something on my why ass. Why people wanted it? Like, why does somebody want like a dark Willy Wonka? I you mean, don't get what? me wrong. This yeah, is a little darker I was say, and it's enjoyable. The the moment I seen it, it's like, I guess. I mean, I'm not a huge. I think we've we've kind of established this in the beginning, but like. I was never a huge on Willy Wonka. You know, it was never yeah. like one of my favorite movies. Yeah, me time. neither. I, it was, I enjoyed it, but again, I only enjoy like half the movie. Right. So like the moment I even got a taste of like what a dark Willy Wonka would be like, I was slightly intrigued. And that's the thing. I think it works for certain things. Um, like Alice in Wonderland is another one. Or I mean, but you can o- almost take a fucking like any Disney cartoon and almost put your dark twist. Like, yeah, which make, but a make, lot of those were po- originally Pocahontas. Like take Pocahontas. A lot of those were though. Like they were all adapted from the Grim Fairy Tales, which were written in like the fucking eighteen hundreds or whatever. And like the original story of like Cinderella, the stepsisters amputated their feet to try to fit it into the glass slipper. Like they cut off their toes and stuff to be like, yeah, look, see, mine's okay. And a lot of those stories, they are dark in nature. Um, Snow White and the Huntsman is actually a lot closer. No, wait, not Snow White. Snow White and the Huntsman is a lot closer to the story than any other Snow White movie. Like I, so I bought a book of like the grim fairy tales a long time ago. I haven't read it, but I did read Snow White Mm -hmm. and yeah, like, I don't know if you saw Snow White and the Huntsman, that Kristen Stewart movie. It's okay. Kristen Stewart's really bad in it, no, but Charlize never. Theron and Thor, no. Chris Hemsworth, nope. they make the movie worth watching. Okay. Um, Does he turn into Thor? No. Okay. I'm but he's, he's pretty good. Charlize Theron is really good in it. Um, and there's some cool like effects and stuff. But yeah, it like opens with like, you know, pricking her finger and three drops of blood in the snow and making wishes. And that's all like right out of the grim fairy tale. And yeah. I mean, it's like I said, um, I fucking example I was trying to say is like, Pocahontas you can you can if someone decides you want to make a dark yeah. make make a, a well, white I mean, a white American guy named John Smith go into fucking I mean, go into the jungle whatever go into 
some unknown territory and then make it turn into Green Inferno. And there you go. You got a dark <laughs> version of fucking Pocahontas. Awesome. I mean, you can honestly just take the real story of Pocahontas and probably make it a little darker because that story is not as PC as that cartoon. But um, we're finding Nemo, you know, you find out they were all dead yeah. to start with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, no, but it, it's, it's finding Nemo's lost and they're I all in purgatory. Feel like I, I think because of how much mystery is behind the character Willy Wonka, there's so much you can do. With yeah, because in, in that original movie, I've never read the book, but I read the Wikipedia of the book. And the Wikipedia's description basically describes exactly the Gene Wilder movie. Like, I mean, since uh, after this podcast, I know one of the things I'm going to do on my bucket list, which means I don't know if I'll do it. Um, <laughs> I kind of want to read the second book. I mean, they're kids books. I'm sure they're very quick reads. Yeah, but I I, I would still have trouble. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I wear Velcro shoes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're velcro shoes and velcro zipper actually the, yeah my crotch that's the, it's not even a velcro zipper. you know, just where my crotch is because i don't have time when i have to pee i have to pee well i mean who has time it's like that's how, that's how everybody at work knows i'm about to pee what it just sounds like <laughs> you just hear that <laughs> no, it's, it's like, oh, Vinny's like dog. oh man um i mean there's things in the willy wonka movie that definitely like the fucking the decapitating chicken scene which mm. i would love to know why that's in there i don't know if anybody's ever talked about it and yeah, the fu- that whole tunnel scene and sequence, he's fucking really creepy. And the signing of the document at the beginning, where it's mm. like, hey, you know, if anything happens, we're not liable or whatever. Yeah, and even I mean, and it's in this script too. Like even, um, well, in this script, it's deliberate. This script, it's like it almost seems like towards the end, he was just really fucking losing it. He, yeah, he was they losing really... his grip on masking the fact that he yeah. was insane. You know. So, and, so the insanity really starts after the Chocolate Palace situation, which we're kind of still on. So he he bangs the salt lady and tells her he's going to need her later. And then the opening of the Chocolate Palace. And of course, it immediately they're having a huge party in there and it immediately starts to melt as you would expect it to. And I guess it's basically implied that all those people will die. I was going to say that my next thing I was going to say is I'm pretty sure they all died because they yeah, were never they brought up after that. They basically say that it quickly collapses. And I'm just going to assume they all drown in chocolate or get Dude, crushed I just, by chocolate. I would have been alive but fat as fuck. Oh, I yeah. My way out I mean, that, that would have been, been a great way to die. Um, <laughs> but at this point, Wonka has already stolen a bunch of... So I think he had a room full of jewels and stuff. And then they open it and it's all empty. And Wonka took it back to London. So now... Wonka's back in London. He's rich as fuck. And immediately... So you, when the poisoning started in the prison, they were poisoning... Ch- oh, fuck. I forgot about this. This is so fucked up. They were poisoning chocolate and sending it... That was getting sent back to London. And there's like a montage of people eating it on the streets and dying. Yeah. Like just foaming, foaming out of the mouth. mouth. Like children. They specifically call <laughs> out poisoned children in this script. And I told her, oh, I can't believe I fucking forgot about that. So, yeah, this shit does get a little dark. Um, really quick, can I just tell you how my mind works? Because I just yeah. have to say it now while I'm thinking. Um, <clears throat> so, imagine the palace melts, right? Yeah. And all these people die. Let's imagine this guy's <laughs> fucking popping. And there's, like, hundreds of people. And they all die yeah. from the chocolate palace melting. Imagine if, like, Godzilla and shit was real, like. That would have been like a people candy bar. <laughs> like if you would have picked, like if you right. were Godzilla or King Kong and you picked up that big palace, that's like a human candy bar. That's some, like a fucking treat. That's like a whole new Wonka bar. For some reason, my mind's going to Reptar and Rugrats. That would be because cool too. wasn't there some chocolate element to that? Like they had, oh, they had Reptar yeah, candy bar, chocolate yeah. bars, and okay, cereal. That's, yeah, that's where I'm going with that. But yeah, I just think about, I'm like, man, that would that's like the ultimate like win for any <laughs> monster or giant. Like you just pick that shit up and it's like. <sighs> Fucking Reptar is such a good name. It's like right up there with Trogdor. It's like my poor name. <laughs> Raging Reptar. Anyways, Raging Reptar. so it melts. Yeah, and Wonka goes to England and is immediately setting out for his revenge. So the Buckets, since everybody was getting poisoned eating their chocolate, they're, they're fucked. Yeah, they're out of done. business. They're now living in the fucking little home that we see in Willy Wonka, and we find out that... Evely has married Hal and they have a child named Charlie. And, and legitimately, not, when I read that, I was. Hal's an alcoholic. Yeah. Evely is just living miserably just, while she's getting cheated on. It seems yeah, like she almost just, knows all this shit's happening. Oh, she, but, she absolutely knows. And she's just trying to take care of the son. She makes it very clear that it's all for Charlie. And le- legitimately, when I read Charlie's name in the script, I'm like, fuck, are we going there? Because, like, up until this point, there was no hint that like we're just going to redo charlie in the chocolate factory i thought literally we're going to end with him in the factory and that's how it goes but yeah it literally just, at this point it just starts replaying the movie um he but it almost they doesn't it melt one 
No, what happens is um, Wonka talks to Evelyn. Yes, and that's he, when she he he, she he crossed paths with her. He like lures. He this. like has a party, and he lures. He invites them. Yeah, and he lures her into another room. Like first, he he like hooks up with his friends Slugworth and Devin, and the. And then he has this party and invites them and he pulls her into another room. He's like, hey, we can be together now. I have the house and money and we can be happy and you can bring Charlie and it'll all be great. And she just says no. And like, she I'm not in love with you. I, I was I never know, in love I, yeah, with I you. I never loved you. And it was all just chocolate like a mistake. Ass. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck your chocolate. And your gobstoppers. <laughs> um, Where's Rage and Reptar? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I love Reptar as a name. Um, but yeah, like she just fucking goes cold, stone cold bitch. Yeah. And so he's just like shattered. shuts down. Yeah. yeah. He, he like comes and goes into like a depression because it yeah. almost, they drop, everything goes almost black. And then all of a sudden the story picks up a year later. Yeah. After and this, this is where the whole self-imposed exile comes in. Like in the movie, everybody's like, nobody's seen him in years. And that's, it's like, oh, it's cause it was over a woman. Right. This, well, this time. Um, so yeah, then we kind of come back. And yeah, like you said, it's like a year or something like that. He's like, he has a beard. Yeah, he's, he's just watching TV. Care of. There's like, they they almost make it seem like he's eating like shit and he's gaining weight because like, yeah, the food that's around there. He's just like, comp- just kind of lost control. Yeah. Oh, I should mention that the invitations to the parties were golden gooses. Oh so, yeah, the eggs. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, they're they're pulling in a lot of Willy Wonka stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it just comes to him fucking hanging out watching tv and everybody's talking about talking shit about wonka and then that's when he comes up with the idea for the golden tickets basically like he's tired of hearing people fucking talk shit about him and it's just like fuck it i'm gonna get my revenge on all these people and so everybody that gets a ticket i think there's one of the kids maybe is is it the gum chewing girl i think she has nothing to do with anything she's just one of the people who happens to find the tickets yeah yeah and no, it, was it him or was it her or was it the Mike TV, Michael TV kid? Oh, yeah, I think it's the TV kid. That's the kid who was just kind of like, he was not, he wasn't really tied into much. Yeah, maybe it's both of them. Maybe they just kind of don't matter. Because the girl who was chewing gum, she's kind of like a little cunt. Yeah. I so mean, I feel like that the, the other dude, was, the other kid, the TV kid, uh, Michael TV whatever yeah Mike he was he, he almost seemed like just like the lucky random kid who was yeah there. and he was just kind of annoyed that he got a ticket but it's just like whatever and even when they're like introducing all the characters like when they do the whole introduction thing when they're at the factory he just totally brushes those two off yeah walks right past yeah him. so we get Augustus Gloop because that's Felix's revenge yeah. we get and keep in mind guys the kid who as a baby when he put on that watch that Felix invented and it ding meaning he was gonna die 10 years later yeah that kid is now at the chocolate this is factory now with the golden later ticket. So this is all starting to fall into place for Charlie's little revenge. Oh, not Charlie's. Yeah, Wonka's I little can't revenge believe I didn't plan. put that together until you fucking brought that up to me. Um, That's when when I when that part came across. I'm like, wow, this is all really uh, yeah, it's well really placed. well written. Yeah. and yeah, and the whole thing is he he invites these kids here. He's going to get his revenge, and he's leading them somewhere, which we don't know. Which it turns out he has one of the vermiceous nids like tied up. They yep. they bring one in from Loompa Land, and they have it. He's basically going to feed Charlie to this yeah. thing. And his whole thing is he wants Charlie to prove that he's just as bad of a kid as yeah, all these other kids. Yeah, he's almost looking for for just hints of 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 evil yeah coming out of charlie and then the whole time but he's nothing yeah, but just like a really time. sweet and nice like down to earth kid yeah you know and um it's almost frustrating to uh willie because he wants he doesn't want to like this yeah kid. he wants yeah he wants to hate him and i will this is my biggest problem with the script is the ending i don't know if you feel this way too i love everything up until literally the last few pages um because yeah it, so we go through there's no songs. There's no hints that this is a musical of any kind. But yeah, they, he brings him into the factory and he personally kicks Augustus Gloop into the chocolate after like asking him if he knew the name Felix or whatever. And then pretty much everything that happens to the kids, he kind of forces it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and the whole time, um, what is it? Uh, Arthur? Yeah, Slugworth. And who's basically like his assistant in this. And Evelyn are trying to get inside so they can um help yeah well save arthur Charlie. arthur's kind of helping him out. at first and the, yeah then he gets kicked out and he leaves and then Evelyn finds out that charlie was invited to the factory and she's trying to get in and they kind of run into each other right 
And then she ends up by this. It gets to the end where all the other kids are. It moves very quickly. Like the last the part end, of the script. Yeah, the, the, the part where the actual movie kind of kicks in. It, it yeah, they they by. rush through yeah, it. Like yeah. they do it in a pretty decent way. But it's real quick. Just like snap, snap, snap. Kids are done. And then it just gets to Charlie. And then Evely gets in there. And he leads him into the final room. Which is he's going to feed him to the vermiceous Nid. But the whole time, Charlie's like, hey, like, what happened to the other kids? Like, are they okay? And, like, Wonka's basically like, going what? Like, what don't worry about it. I don't yeah. even know well, what he's, he's like, talking about. Yeah, he's like, what other kids? Like, we're here alone, basically. And he's so crazy to the point where he's just completely ignoring that and these kids yeah, even that, exist. Yeah, this is where his, like, craziness is really starting to come out. Where you're just like, all right, this guy's fucking lost it. Like, it's yeah. not even concealed. And he, um, at that point, it, it, it's... He tells Charlie, like, tell me what you think of me. Like, give me your opinion of me. Give me yeah. your, you know, and he, he almost wants him to like, just give the him the most ruthless answer back. Yeah. But instead, he gets the total opposite. And Charlie He's says, like, you're, the you're Willy Wonka. Ever. Like, you're the happy guy. Like, the reason why, the way he said it, it was so it was so good. He was like, you know, you're happy all the time. And the reason why it's hard to be that way is because no one else, no one else in the world is like that. Everybody else yeah. can't keep that smile on. And you do. And I hope you stay that way forever. And it's, it's like... Yeah. It, he and started that's to, the breaking point basically right and i think I, I get what you're saying like i i wanted i wanted to keep that streak going where it's like oh it seems like he's about to have a heart he's about to have a yeah. heart and then just kind of ended on just like a note where you're just like wow that was fucked up you know like because i yeah. feel like what okay so just to be just to be clear with you guys what happens is after um, well before we say that i want to say with charlie there's one moment i like where he names the good qualities of the other kids and like yeah, he looks yeah, up can to I, can I ask you something yeah. about that? Um, so, sorry, I cut you off. What he was basically Charlie goes through and, and kind of explains like, oh, each well, kid. She, she was really brave. I wish I could be as brave as her. He was really like he says that like Augustus Gloop worshipped him and that he loved his chocolate. Veruca Sal was like one of the sweetest people. Yeah, he's ever met. which like, in the fucking original movie she's she is a, she's a fucking asshole. She's the worst fucking kid. But, I've but that's seen. that's the question I have is like so does this mean Charlie was explaining them the total opposite way that they were portrayed this like he whole always time sees in the, the good script people yeah but I'm starting to wonder like is that really what it is or is, or Wonka, is Wonka just, so just crazy. fucking crazy and he's convincing himself to see what he wants to see I mean in the script they never really established that these kids are bad he's just punishing them because of the parents yeah but it, I'm, I I go back to the bombs. He didn't see bombs as what they were when they were playing and almost getting hit. So maybe he's. I mean, you could things, absolutely be right. Yeah, like maybe he sees things the way he wants to, and he wanted to see those kids yeah. as evil kids. I mean, I'll say in the script they don't establish them as evil kids. They establish them as being parts of evil families, mm -hmm. like it's like Freddy Krueger. Yeah, like he's he's Street. punishing the parents by taking away their children. Right. And Total Freddy Krueger. Exactly. In, but in the original movie, all these kids are clearly terrible. Like Augustus Gloop is fucking sloth and gluttony incarnate veruca salt is the biggest bitch of a child anyone has ever seen mike tv i feel like i feel like even as an adult i would still hate her face oh yeah she's the worst um although she does have a pretty good song the i want the whole world song is one of the more enjoyable songs yeah, it's, in Willy it's, Wonka. it's good with the with the video off yeah and it kind of reminds me i love the scenes in the original movie where like a kid's gonna do something terrible and gene wilder just leans on something he's just like no stop <laughs> don't like he just doesn't care um but yeah, I mean, it is a possibility that the way the script is written, these kids, he's not even noticing that they're good kids, and he really just cares about punishing the parents. Right. Or maybe it is that he's just so fucking crazy he doesn't notice. Because they don't do anything in the script that... The closest we get is Augustus Gloop is eating the chocolate river like he is in the movie, and he's kind of ignoring Wonka. Right. And but I mean, wouldn't any kid ignore yeah, any and, adult for chocolate? And then we find out from Charlie sure. that he's so obsessed with Wonka and his chocolate that he was trying to create it himself and he couldn't do it and thought Wonka was a genius. Yeah. So maybe he's just fucking marveling at this fucking delicious river chocolate, river of chocolate, and just wasn't paying attention to him. Yeah. But it really could go either way. I like to, I like to think that maybe it is a, he's just crazy. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> um, yeah, the more I think about it, I, for the sake of the dark... Uh, the whole dark uh, vibe of this whole script, I gotta say, it's just fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, but honestly, my my biggest problem with the script, it isn't how they rush through the story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's literally like the last two pages where he's like trying to convince Charlie that he's a good kid and Charlie or a bad kid, and Charlie 
proves that he's a good kid. And then he's just like, you know what? You can it's all it. yours. It's and like, then he just gets in the elevator and takes off. And it's yeah. just over. And I was like, wait, what? I, I, you want to know where – honestly, you want to know where I thought it was going? Where? I thought – he was going to jump Will, in and get eaten by the vermouth. Yeah, I thought he was going to be the one to be Yeah, eaten. me too. And that's what I was like. That would have been perfect. If I, you that would have been great. Perfect thing to do. Have him show a little bit of heart by saving Charlie so he doesn't get eaten, and then he gets eaten. So then, that's so it's like he's still fucking, fucking – he still gets what he deserves, but at the same time, he shows that slight sympathy where you're yeah. like, oh, I kind of – kind of. Like, I fucking thought that's exactly what was going to happen. It would have been the perfect ending. Yeah. But no, I, he literally just like – and so it, it's kind of set up there on a catwalk. Above this like circular pit where the room yeah, is I almost knitted. picture Star Wars. Yeah, it, that's exactly what I was thinking. Or, <laughs> or the scene in Ace Ventura: Pet Detective with the Shark Tank. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that Touché, just fucking popped Touché. in my head, Touché. but that's exactly what I was thinking. Minus the water. <laughs> Fuck, man, I want to watch that. Um, but yeah, and d- doesn't Charlie start to fall right because the Vermis yeah, knitted? Yeah, because he, he actually saves Charlie. Him. He saves Charlie from from getting eaten. Yeah, and which hit- would have been the perfect time for him to. Maybe lose lose balance or something, and yeah. he saves him. Grandpa grabs Charlie, but doesn't wasn't able to grab Willie in time, and Willie yeah. dies. Yeah, I think that would have been, a mo- and it's like kind of like a redemption ending. Yeah, because he gets what he deserves, but at the same time, it's yeah. almost like he gets that Wonka, sympathetic. Like as as nice of a character as he starts out to be, Wonka becomes a murdering asshole. Yeah, and just kind of crazy, and he's he's like the good guy gone bad. Like he's lost himself, and that would have been a good. Re- redemptive ending and it just fucking ends so quickly just him he literally just like saves charlie and he's just like i was wrong the whole time you were right you deserve it and then he just backs up in his elevator and leaves and that's it worst stepdad ever yeah <laughs> right and yeah and he's so Evelyn is a completely unredeemed character yeah like there's there no, no reason i feel like there was no closure with that at all no she just, just left that whole story kind yeah. of just open on the table she just wants to take care of charlie and she doesn't want to go with willie which i is fine nothing happens to hal like that whole thread is completely left angling oh and i mean honestly i almost felt like the one thing that was missing was one last conversation between willie and Evelyn. if you're gonna end it that yeah. way there should have been some kind of like there should have been something especially if, if she was the reason why like the reason behind your downfall before this yeah. whole second invitation, she, this she whole was golden the ticket thing. Whole basis of why he does this. Yeah, and I mean, it, I feel like maybe explain to her why you're giving Charlie. Yeah. The fucking factor. What What is this kid gonna do? Is he just yeah. you just want him to have diabetes? I mean, like what? Like what is the <laughs> point of this? And the The closest we get is the meeting at the party. Where she, and that that just ends with her saying she doesn't want anything to do with him, which will leave her son that part, alone. That part felt like such an important part in the script. Yeah, that it almost felt like okay, there has to be one more meeting between them. Yeah, because it's it's a little abrupt. Like again, yeah, it feels like there's no arc. Like normally there would be a story arc, and they'd be like, we, you know, I don't want to be with you, and then find out like, okay, I do want to be with you. I thought something was going to happen with Hal. Literally, it's just completely dropped. I mean, it's just weird because, like, you get hot and cold. The two times that they've had a conversation, it was hot and cold. The first time, she yeah. wanted to marry him, and she kissed him, and they seem fine. Next time they have a one-on-one, she tells him she never loved him. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, can maybe this last talk will really clarify things. But I feel like that was kind of left that, unanswered. And the thing was, she said she never loved him, but you see that she does the things with Charlie that they used to do, having fake tea parties and stuff like that. So clearly that's bullshit. Yeah. She clearly had some feelings for him. She really enjoyed what he represented or stood for. And it just it, it falls flat. Like, I feel like there's something missing. Like, I missed, like, five or six pages or something. Yeah, no, for sure. And then just, like, he, he steps into the elevator and he's gone. And yeah, which I'm, made me think of this. That's why you said... When you brought up the second book, I didn't even know it was the second book. Yeah, the glass but in elevator. the second book, it's all of them. It's the grandpa, Charlie, and Wonka in the glass elevator, and they go to this no. fucking space hotel. No, they should have died. Yeah, which was the grandpa even? Was He was part of it, right? Like He yeah. was he came along, he went with, but yeah. he doesn't really do anything. There's no scene where they drink the soda pop or anything like no, that. No, he just dies. <laughs> Is that what happens? <laughs> no, no. I, just, I, say, I don't remember I just, that. I picture my own ending. Yeah, I mean... Maybe that's the reason why, because this is one of the blacklist scripts that, like, oh, this script could get made someday. And I would, I would be a total fan of doing. It. I just hope that they would restructure the ending to, yeah, to kind of. It needs to be a little longer. Yeah, they need to tie up all the loose ends. They need to deal with Hal because that character deserves that. Because he beats a woman, 
practically right. Ra- I mean, I don't want to say rapes because per- she's clearly perfect, into perfect it. thing they could have did is have him go with Evely to look for Charlie. Yeah. And then right when he gets to the end, where Charlie's about to go, yeah, thing. he goes to help Charlie and he fucking falls in. Yeah. You know, like something like that because it, that ne- he needs to be addressed. There needs to be more finality with him and Evely. And like maybe she could just say like, like I do love you. It just can never be or whatever. It's just, mm-hmm. something. There's just something just feels empty. It's lacking. Mm-hmm. And I mean, because it, it just kind of contradicts the whole message that was dropped numerous times, and it was that all bad apples deserve to die. Yeah, you know, and you would. That's why I think that if Wonka would have died in the script, it would have been a lot. Because I mean, fitting. Wonka becomes a bad apple. Yep. And but, yeah, I just feel I, I wonder if maybe the writer, that's what he wanted to do and maybe just couldn't pull the trigger or was maybe or there was had some interference or had intentions of doing something with it. You know, yeah, like, maybe a studio made him change it. I don't know if a studio owns this or because like the way blacklist scripts work, sometimes a studio owns it or sometimes it's kind of still being shopped around. I I've, I would love to see this movie made the way it is up until the ending. Because yeah. legit, as I read this script, I laughed, I cared, I blasted through it because I was super in- invested in the story, and then the ending is just flat. Yeah, but you can only I mean, like I said, maybe maybe the person who wrote this had had an idea of what he wanted the sequel to be. You know? Yeah. So that could always which be I a couldn't thing. even envision a sequel to this honestly. Right. Which is which um, I almost feel like for for a screenwriter that's more fun because you get to kind of paint your own picture. Yeah. You know? But um, and all in all, I think it's fucking fun as i was to read. so surprised i would um i recommend just reading it just for the sake of yeah checking it out it's even as somebody who's never really cared that much about willy wonka i was really into it and honestly i wanted a fucking wonka bar <laughs> afterwards yeah like, i just googled it and i can't find them yeah like a hundred percent i was the press wanted again. wonka chocolate bar just because i've never had one i want to know what it tasted like um but yeah i mean is there anything else you need to add about it no i um I recommend checking out that Gobstopper short. It's only like not even two minutes on YouTube. Yeah, just YouTube. It's called Gobstopper. It's a a funny or die bit or college humor, I think. Yeah, college humor. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to find. It's only like a minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah. And (laughs) I I mean, if there's anything that you want to do, if you're a big uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory fan, I recommend reading the script and then maybe rewatching the old movie and see if you you kind of watch it with whole new eyes. Because I feel like... I did just just for fun, you know. It's it's kind of fun to just picture the backstory and 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 placing it into the actual original. Yeah, movie. honestly, it worked both ways. Reading the script made me want to rewatch the movie and appreciate the movie a little more, and then watching the movie made me appreciate the writer how he tied it all together right. and like the way he used things from the movie and dropped them into the script. Very clever, very well written, and a lot of funny dialogue. I laughed out loud reading it multiple times. Yep. Um, but all right, man. Thanks for sitting with me, no talking problem, Wonka. We, do you we, want uh, any plugs you need to do? Um, no, as always, check out the Cryptic Closet. Um, it's a horror apparel site. We're actually, I don't know if anybody uh, listens and is from Ohio, but we will be in Cincinnati, Ohio from March 17th through the 19th for Horror Hound Weekend, um, along with like Tobin Bell, um, Negan from Walking Dead. No, no, that was... I, Think, yeah, actually, I think he's going to be there. Is he going to be there? He was going to be at C2E2, but he canceled. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're doing a few. We're doing that one. We're doing... Tobin um, Bell was Saw, right? Yeah, he's Jigsaw. Played Jigsaw. Um, and it's going to be like the Monster Squad, like, I want to say fucking... Nice. 30th anniversary or something. Oh, wow. You know, so... I've never seen that. I won't. Yeah, so it's... um We're going to be doing that next weekend. Um, We got some new stuff coming out. We're going to do uh Get Out Pins. So oh, God, uh, I want to see that movie so bad, dude. It's so good, yeah, so good. And I still yet to read the script because I know you yeah. said that's me, yeah, but somebody, I almost want to watch that, me that and see how much different it is from the. Yeah, film. if it's different and worth doing an episode, let me know. Absolutely. Well, guys, thanks for listening. All um, right. Well, I got a few plugs here. If you want to email the show, about, talk about for me. Oh, okay. I, I have well, nothing else. I don't felt like plug. you're about to close my show, man. No, I'm just closing my legs. <laughs> oh, my right. legs. Well, I don't want you to do that. Um. Yeah, so the Cryptic Closet, crypticcloset.com. You can check out all that. And you're on Instagram as well. Yeah, that's the only thing I really care about. Yeah. Instagram. Um, and fucking great shirts, great pins. The Eric Draven pin is fucking awesome. Um, yeah, so if you want to check that out, you can check out crypticcloset.com. Check them out on Instagram. If you want to email the show, us, uh, so you have any questions, comments about what we're talking about, you can email us at shelvedfilmpodcast at gmail.com. 
And you can follow us on Twitter at, at Shelved Podcast, which I am always on, always responding to people. I give, I've been getting a lot of feedback from people on Twitter, and I'm really enjoying interacting with you guys. I'm glad people are liking the show. Um, and if you are liking the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave us a review. Five that's, star. I mean, leave Frog any splash. review. I'll read all reviews on the mini episode. I've already done so before, and I promise I will continue to do so. But that's what helps with the fucking iTunes algorithms, and it'll get us. It gets us pushed up the charts so more people can find the show. For sure. And I think I've mentioned this last time uh, during one of the episodes I was on. But if you guys find any really killer horror scripts that you think me and Jeremy would. Uh, really dig or you just want to hear us uh, talk about it feel free to send it his way and if uh, it's something we choose yeah. i will definitely let you pick a free shirt of your choice oh nice off the cryptic closet and send it your way just for uh listening and trying to help us out that fucking rob zombie shirt you gave me i close in the dark oh it's so good i love that shirt mine did shrink after i watched it the first well, if time you need another one i got yeah it i fucked home. i might have to get another one i fucked it up um but yeah thanks man and yeah that's a great deal so fucking leave a review send us a script send them to the gmail that i mentioned earlier and everybody thanks for listening Vinny, thanks for sitting with me thank you